look, I know I changed the time up today. I really want to test out some different times on doing this show. But welcome. We're actually uh, <clears throat> streaming this to our business page and our group. Okay? So the first thing I want to do is, um, so Pat's on here. And um, the last couple shows, we did not um, uh, get to give away anything. And, um, and I always promise that we will. And for whatever reason, got caught up because it's a new show. We're trying to figure out what we're doing. How you doing, Don? Um, you know, it's just going to take us a few shows to get the rhythm going. And, uh, and it'll, be, it'll be a knockout for everybody. So um, we will be uh, giving some stuff away today. And um, um, Pat, if you could maybe be in charge of that, that'd be freaking awesome. Can everybody hear me okay? If you say yes, I can see, I can know that you hear me. Everything's cool, right? So look, we're doing, how you doing, Fred, Linda, Tyler, Lucas, and um, all right, I just got some thumbs up that everybody can hear me. Look, we are doing a stuffed tenderloin today. I know uh, a couple weeks ago, I said I was going to like stick to like appetizers and stuff, but because of the bad weather and we had to miss last week's show, sucked. Um, I want to do something a little bit towards the holidays that are coming up and stuffed tenderloins or, huh? Are you on Instagram? No. Okay. Uh, that's my daughter. She's checking to make sure the feed's going good. Anyway, um, I want to do something a little bit towards the holiday grilling and I just thought that this, uh, tenderloin would be freaking awesome. The hardest part about this is filleting the the, the tender the pork tenderloin okay um, you do need a sharp knife you do need um, I'm doing it in the barrel house so I'm gonna dump the coals in there now hold up the coals are burning up on me just give me one minute So you don't need <clears throat> a ton of coal for this because uh, you're only going to be cooking about an hour, something like that. Uh, this is a, I think it was a five pound tenderloin. And um, I just used, I have uh, two of these. I have one small one that I use for when I just, you know, when you're doing something that you don't need a lot of heat, uh, you don't need to do a whole big old chimney like this and waste a bunch of shit, right? So, I just did one of these, and um, maybe that much more of unlit. So, like two of these total. Um, along with that, I have three chunks of apple. Okay, you don't want to, I guess it depends on your own taste. Uh, but for me, I don't want to over smoke it because I want to taste the pork, and I want to taste all the good shit that I'm putting in the pork too, right? So... We want all that to be going before we put the pork in, so we get this in there, put this together. Lock it down. So, now the grate, if you do have a barrel house cooker, I'm actually using, I just got a the full grate. The full grate's an option, and I just got one in, so I'm using the full grate, and I have it down on this second ring, okay? So the first thing that I want to do here is um, is trim up the fat off of this thing. Um, I was hoping to have this done before we went on the air, but um, I didn't get to it. So, now, it is Sunday morning. For some people, it's football day. This is actually, when you cook this up, another reason I did this earlier is, um, one, so if people are going to see football or tailgating, maybe they even have time to do this before they go. That'd be awesome. Because um, almost any food is good for tailgating food, right? It doesn't have to be finger food. You cut that stuff up, and uh, you're good to go. 
So, and I did make myself a, a little cocktail for the morning. So, um, in case anybody who uh, is enjoying a cocktail. All right. So, look, you really do need a sharp knife. Um, you don't want to use a chef's knife like this. You want a, like a boning knife, right? And you just want to cut that fat right on down. Because if you don't, your seasonings are not going to get down to the meat. Okay, it's not going to work through that fat. Okay, so for the most part, you always want to cut away from you with the knife. Can everybody still hear me okay? Okay, you want all that silver skin gone. Okay, because the silver skin is not going to add flavor. And it's actually going to block any flavor from getting into the meat. Okay, so it's going to take me just a minute to trim this up. You want to watch your fingers naturally. Some of that goes without saying, I guess. So I am here by myself today. It's hard to get people up early on a Sunday morning to work. So I have committed to do this by myself every Sunday. Now, I'm almost done. Just a little bit more. And you can see that silver skin underneath that fat. Um, so you can see why you really, really, really need to trim that stuff off. Okay? And really, the only tools that you need for this, it kind of depends on what you're going to cook them on. If you're going to use <clears throat> your Weber or something like that, you might need a spatula, right? You might need tongs. You might need some beast armor. It all depends on what you're using on getting that meat off when it's done. Close here. All right, I have it pretty cleaned up. Just a little bit on the back side here. All right, so look, this is all pretty much it. Let me take this here, kind of get rid of it, get it out of my way. <clears throat> you want to make sure you have a nice clean area to work from. Now, the hard part, right? So the thing you need to do to fillet this, because you want to lay this all open, so you want to cut about a half inch deep, kind of like in a circle, okay? Now, this is actually in such a way I could actually just slice it. You see how see how thin it is? It's only like uh, maybe two inches thick. I don't know. Let me see how it goes. Let me see how it goes. Yeah. 
idea. All right, see that? So you want to get like a half inch bite in there, maybe a little bit thicker. But you want to try to keep it consistent, whatever you do. Okay? I hope you can see okay. And I can't see if there's any questions or not. So you just keep, you keep going. And you keep rolling it back. Okay? And make sure you do not, you want to make sure you do not cut through the other side. Okay? Depending on how often you do something like this is going to determine how uh, how neat it is, but it doesn't have to look pretty. Okay, so we're almost ready to turn. So see, when when you're coming around the backside, you need to make sure you turn with the meat. Okay, so we're almost okay. All right, so now we got that. So now we need to keep on, right? But we want to This part is probably the easier part, I think. Tyler, can you hear me okay? Oh yeah, look at this. There you go. Okay. Can you bring me the uh, roll of paper towels, please? All right. So, look at this. This thing is beautiful, right? It is beautiful. All right, so, you have this. Now, some people, at this point, uh, pound it out a little bit. I don't do all that. Look, I don't think it needs any more pounding. It's like a solid half inch to three quarter inch all the way across. It's almost consistent. I don't think I did a bad job at all. Okay, so here, give me uh, actually, that's good. Okay, so at this point, what you want to do, take a little bit of, actually, go get me the olive oil. It's the other one of these. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil, just a little bit, and spread it over this side. I'm going to hit it with some salt and pepper. And then, yes. Thank you. All right. So look, I'm just going to hit just a little bit of olive oil. All right, and we're going to rub it around. Okay. <clears throat> rub it around. All right. So, some salt. Really, the only seasonings I'm putting on here is salt, pepper, um, a little bit of uh, ground up thyme. I know in the recipe that I posted in the content part of the post, it calls for basil too. I don't have any basil. So, we're going to do it without the basil. Um, those are the basic um, and then we have some other stuff that we want to put in there, right? But first, we want to hit it with some salt. You don't need to hit too much because you got a lot of flavors going in here. All right. Is anybody asking any questions? Is anybody still in there? All right. So once you get your salt and pepper in there, a bit of garlic. A little bit of garlic. All right. I didn't put my thyme on there. So look, I'm just going to scoop a little bit of this and dust. You don't want too much time. Uh, Mike asked how, about how many pounds is the pork? The pork is, uh, it's a little over five pounds. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Go look on that uh, package, it's in the sink. 
I'm pretty sure it was just a little bit over five pounds. Okay, yeah, it was five pounds, so we're good. All right, so <clears throat> just a little bit of garlic on there. I'm going to spread that garlic around just a little bit with, uh, with my hand. There we go. All right, so then we have, I diced up some apples, kind of small, right? Yeah, it's going to be about, it's going to be about 45 minutes to an hour, about that. Okay, and your smoker's going to be, um, you know, between 250, 300, about. Doesn't have to be exact because, you know, it's going to turn out, you don't want to cook it too hot and fast, right? Okay, then we have some, um, some dried cranberries. All right, so they look like raisins, but they taste way better. You just sprinkle those around. All right. Let me take this glove off. We're going to have to crumble up. We have goat cheese. Okay. So, so we're going to do some, some crumbled up goat cheese. So. The goat cheese is pretty freaking good. Goat cheese, I spent more on the goat cheese than I did on the pork. <laughs> For right now, goat cheese is like a dollar an ounce. So this was four bucks, and I had three of them. But I don't think I need all three. So, um, so we'll be good. So, are, do we have any other questions coming in? All right, so you just want to take this and crumble it up. Throughout. It doesn't have to be crumbled up like bad, right? Because goat cheese is awesome. Especially, man, uh, with the apple and the uh, cranberry and the pork running through it, this is going to be killer. You know what? I knew I got way too much goat cheese, but it was better to have too much than not enough. So, one four ounce pack of goat cheese will be enough. Might add some more uh, cranberry and stuff too. Any questions? You're gonna look. Uh, we have the fee going in the group and on the business page. And on business page, the Grill Beast business page on face. Facebook. No, Facebook. I'm on Facebook. So there you go. All right. How's that look? <clears throat> so I'm going to use the rest of my um, my apples, and I'm going to use the rest of my cranberries here. Yeah, it's okay. That's all right. All right. So now, uh, besides filleting the pork, rolling it back up is is um, kind of tedious, right? Uh, what you don't want to do, you do not want to um, smash it um, and squish everything around, right? You want to roll it l kind of firm but loose. Does that make sense? Oh, um, Dan Mayer said, ask what brand of gloves you're using. Um, these gloves? They are the um, Amex Black. Here. Can you see these okay? <clears throat> but yeah, that, that's the brand I use. Sometimes I don't use any gloves. It just depends on what I'm doing. All right, so what you want to do is start folding it, okay? You're just going to fold it right back the same way it came apart, see? And like I said, you don't want to squeeze it. And then you put your seam down. How do you like that? All right? So, <clears throat> the other thing you're going to need is butcher's twine, okay? Sometimes butcher's twine can be a pain in the butt to find, right? And um, 
since we moved, I couldn't find mine. So I was at the grocery store last night trying to find butcher's twine. They didn't have any. So uh, I, I ran into a butcher that was working on the meat, and he went and got me some from the back uh, for free. So that was cool. So the only thing you need to do now is you need to watch how you're bringing it underneath because you want to bring it with the fold, not against it. Like that. You can bring it up here. Tied in a knot. Not too tight, but not too loose because you need to hold that seam together. Okay, so this is the part that I'm always... Okay, hold on. So you bring it around again. So can you see what I'm doing? So see that? So um, yeah. Can you see through that? Okay. okay. So you just you take it under like this. And then you loop it underneath. Okay? And then you tug it. Now if you're lucky and you get it right, it all lines up. Uh, and it looks nice and pretty. Alright? But it doesn't have to. It can be crooked. As long as it holds it together, that's really all that matters. Okay, I'm almost done. So as you can see, I used... A solid 12 foot of twine is what I had. That's what he gave me. And it looks like it's probably going to be just about perfect. I probably could have done a, less of a gap on that one, but it would be fine. And we'll do one, one more. Probably could have done one closer on the end there too. Oh well. Here we go. Let's see how it did. All right, so that's my seam. Can you see the seam? See how nice and tight that is? That's exactly the way you want it to turn out. And then you just need to tie this bad boy off. All right, dude, that is it, except all I have to do is uh, rub the outside with a little bit of uh, olive oil and uh, salt and pepper, and then if you have any questions, we're more than happy to answer them, and hopefully... Alright, so let me hit it with some salt and pepper, rub it all in, and um, That is olive oil, yes, Evo. Alright, so, put one more pair of these on. So, because you're going back and forth from salt shakers and all that, i got to keep taking the gloves on and off. So, uh, it's either that or use a lot of paper towels. Okay, let me roll this around a little bit. This thing looks beautiful. Can you see it okay? So, as you can see, 
a nice tight wrap. The seam is all there. It's all closed up nice. Um, and that's really all I have to do. I'm going to throw it on the smoker and then I'll be right back. Hang tight. I'm not really going to fool around putting a probe in that. Um, what time is it? It's 10.30. All right, so it's 10.30. I'm going to check it at uh, 11 and see how close I am. So you do want to use a, uh, if you don't have a regular probe thermometer, you want to use a quick read thermometer, like the beast injector, I mean the beast Um But look. That is, that is the show. Oh, wait. Germ what? Germ Stores yeah. asks, are you a battery powered grinder for the salt and pepper? <laughs> Dude, that's a good idea. Um, maybe I'll have to do, get one of those things. Um, oh, hey, Dave, more. Hey, man, I used, um, I used apple wood. That's pretty much what I always use with pork is apple. Um, and now pork butts and shoulders, sometimes I'll throw some pecan in there, but, uh, I love apple, man. I use apple on everything. Um, let me see over in the group. Don, or does it matter? I didn't see the other comment, so I don't know what it matters about. Um, oh, and if you're asking, does it matter about the wood? Really, it's your own preference. I guess that's, um, uh, hey, Diane. Hey, look, um, Pat, is Pat there? Um, have we given anything away yet? Um, we need to uh, pick a couple people to give some stuff away. Do I prefer regular charcoal or, um, or lump? Uh, Dan Mayer um, is asking. Um, I prefer lump, but sometimes um, uh, briquettes are easier. Okay, so, uh, it, so it kind of depends on what I'm doing. Um, and if I do use briquettes, I use uh, all natural, which I use stumps or stubs. I always say stumps. It's stubs. Uh, stubs, when you light it at first, it's a little smoky, but it clears up. And um, can't wait to try it. No, man, this uh, recipe is awesome. It really, truly is awesome. So, um, and dude, this thing's going to be ready for uh, lunchtime. Hey, Benny, Clay. John, Pat Thomas, Isabel, uh, do you, no, uh, Isabella, I do not soak my wood at all. Uh, to me, and it's my personal, personal opinion, uh, it's a waste of time. Um, if you're using chips, now I still, I still wouldn't soak them because you're just going to smolder the wood instead of burn the wood. You want to get a nice clean burn, right? So like, see how that's burning back there? That's a nice smoke. Uh, if, if. If it was, uh, if the wood was soaked in water, it'd be, it'd be smoldering. It'd be a dirty smoke. Um, hey, Benny, how you doing, man? Uh, Wade Price. Um, <laughs> it does smell good, right? Uh, Mary, hello to the, hey, Mary. Oh, Marty, I'm sorry. Uh, Ron, Isabella, yep, you're, no problem, Isabella. This is weird, answering questions from two different feeds. Um, Okay, yeah, so um, because I filleted the pork, I didn't worry about injecting it. Like, usually, if I do a pork loin, I will inject it. Um, and I just use, like, a, a, a simple pork um, brine injection. Um, I can't think of the daggone ingredients right off the top of my head, but it's, like, uh, chicken stock, Worcester, Worcestershire, um, Salt, sugar, and a couple other things. I'll have to post it if you need me to. Um, let me see, Ryan. Oh, no. Ryan Clark, always use seasoned wood. Never, ever, ever cook with green, unseasoned wood. Now, I mentioned this on another feed. Myron Mixon, I think I saw something one time where he said that sometimes he'll use green wood. I, and don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. But it seems like I was watching him do a show with his son, 
and he went and cut some peach fresh and used it. So I don't do that, and I wouldn't recommend Benjamin. Um, uh, Benjamin, I've never, I've never cooked this in the oven. I, um, I pretty much do all my cooking outside. I, uh, sometimes I heat something up in a toaster oven or something. Uh, or I do breakfast biscuits in the oven, but I really don't cook meat in the oven. I'm sorry, man. I, I can't even answer that. Uh, I would, I, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd say uncovered, but, you know, because you're not, so the reason, I would say, you know what, if you're doing it in the oven, probably cover it. But, you know, there's probably somebody more qualified than me to answer that question. Um, Gerald, okay, so I stuffed it with uh, diced up green apple, um, dried um, cranberries, uh, garlic, uh, and goat, crumbled up goat cheese. Um, it's, the recipe is posted in the content part of this live feed. Um, Gary, what temp and how long? So uh, it's going to take uh, 45 minutes to an hour, and it is... Um, it, the temperature is going to range uh, 250 to 300 is what I would say do. I mean, I, the barrel, oh, shit. I'm glad you said that. I forgot to adjust my dampers. <laughs> so I'm glad somebody asked about temperature again. But anyway, uh, the barrel runs um, just because you set it on a setting de depending on your elevation, and it runs about... 250 to 300 I think um, but uh, you know I wouldn't go over 300 on it you know I, I'd keep it or at least not over 325 uh, no brine today cut thin exactly oh yeah thanks Wendy right yeah so uh, there's no brining because we filleted it we cut it to it was about a, a good five eighths three quarter inch all the way around and so there's really not enough there to brine, right? And you got the flavors from all these stuff that we stuffed in it, the salt, pepper, olive oil, all that's going to add all the flavor and the smoke. Um, I couldn't see Isabella's comment. It went away too fast. Um, Ron, Rob, you never had goat cheese? I tell you what, um, it is awesome. And it's going to be, like, really awesome in that. Um, like, you don't want to overdo it. Like, you want just enough ingredients of each thing. Hey, Desmond, uh, that you want each flavor to be able to peak, right? You want to be able to taste each flavor. You don't want it so overpowering of one thing that it drowns out the other flavors. Uh, Scott, what's in the glass? It's vodka and grapefruit juice. Uh, it's uh, Yeah, I'd actually drink it very often. I was trying to... Do it to where we have a drink of the month, and it may still do that. Um, but, again, um, I'm just getting into the groove of this uh, Feast with the Beast and trying to figure out exactly how we're running it. So we're going to test out a bunch of different stuff. Um, sometimes we do just some appetizers, and this is actually the first big thing that I have did on here. But I don't, I'd rather show you guys stuff that you won't normally do. Um, but... Um, and, 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 you know, just get you to kind of step out your normal comfort zone. That's really kind of what my goal is. But, and, and then on the other hand, um, I want to give you what you want. Uh, so I want to give you what you want and what you need. Uh, hey, Jessica, how you doing? Thank you. Appreciate that. Coming from you, that's a compliment. That's a great compliment. Um, so... Uh, you know, but at the same time, we, I want to make sure I give you guys what you want, right? So if there are, uh, Jay, I have used a ceramic smoker. I did for a few years. I loved it. It was uh, Bayou Classic, but I, I don't know. You know how you kind of move on to different stuff. I kind of got tired of it, and I've moved on, you know. Um, so if there's something that you guys want to see on this show, it's every Sunday, uh, let me know. Um, Another thing I'm trying to do is every day do a short live feed. On We do it on our business uh, Facebook page and our business Instagram page. Um, and it's answering questions. 
okay? Um, and it's going to be like a fireside chat thing. We're going to uh, try to get it to where we can interview people on the show live. Um, that way you're just not hearing my take on everything. You're hearing some other people, whether they might be competition people or just Joe Schmo, right? Regular people. Um, let me see. I'm trying to catch up with these. I uh, did one last week. Came out great. Uh, Thanksgiving. Come. Yeah, I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to be doing a turkey on the uh, barrel. Um, let me see. Uh, hope maybe even in a week, maybe I'll do a turkey and show you guys what I do for the injection and rub it down and all that kind of stuff and show how it works out in the, um, in the, uh, barrel. Um, let me see. Uh, when will you have, so we, we ship to Canada, we ship worldwide, Diane. Um, we've had a couple retailers in Canada contact us, but they've never followed through. Um, with getting anything stocked in their stores. Um, but we're working on it, but uh, we'll ship to Canada. The only thing that you have to worry about is when it gets into your country, you have to pay that VAT tax, right? But if you have somebody in the U.S. that you can ship it to and you get it from them, um, we can do that too. Uh, you just let us know what you want to do. We ship, we ship everything. I've shipped things to... Um, Afghanistan, I've shipped to, to um, um, China, that's crazy, Japan, um, we have people in the military that are stationed all around the world that, that uh, uh, order stuff from us all the time. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get it to you wherever you're at. Um, let me see, Desmond, right, I need two tips on smoke for Thanksgiving. Best size for a party of 18 to 20. You know what? Maybe we should do a uh, live feed in the middle of the week that talks about that kind of stuff, Desmond. That's actually a great idea, man. Um, every every, lot, every uh, uh, show that we do from here to probably the end of the year is going to be geared towards um, like holiday sort of cooking and um, tailgate stuff, right? Tailgate stuff is all the time. Uh, so, but we're going to try to gear it a little. Hey, Brian, how you doing, man? Um, we're going to try to gear it towards uh, like holiday type meals. You know, that way, um, if if you're somebody who's not used to cooking on the grill for the holiday, um, sometimes that can be overwhelming, and you can screw some shit up. I rem I've screwed a lot of stuff up, and and on holidays, I've screwed up turkeys, I've screwed up hams. All that kind of stuff. So maybe we'll do, we're definitely going to do a turkey. We're definitely going to do a ham so we can show people how to do that. Um, and so the hams, uh, you, people call those twice smoked because you buy them. It's really ready to eat, but you can smoke them again. Um, I know I've heard people say you cannot. Hey, how you doing, Wade? Um, uh, we do low country bull for Christmas dinner. Uh-oh. Where are you at, Wade? Um... Sean, Cuban sandwich for tailgating. Yeah, you know, uh, that has a lot of stuff in it, so maybe we could come up with something for uh, a tailgating Cuban. <laughs> I guess that sounds weird. Um, Christopher Beck, how you doing, man? Uh, we doing a whole hog. Wow, a whole hog. Um, I wouldn't mind doing a whole hog out here one day. Um, I just moved in, so I'm not all set up completely. I do have my patio set up. It's all good. I need to get my fire pit set up and some other things. Uh, dry aged roast, rib roast. Yeah, you know, um, rib roast are really big for uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving too. Um, so you know what? These are all great ideas, and these are the things that I definitely like to hear about. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody has any questions left. Uh, you could roll a pork loin in Cuban ingredients. Whoa. Jennifer Bates. That's a good idea. Cool. See, I'm going to go through, <laughs> or I'm going to have Ace go through all these comments and grab all these ideas because um, this is the stuff we want to know um, because this, to me, it tells us what you actually want me to do, right, or want me to show you. Um, and thanks, Kenneth. I really appreciate that, man. Um, Stephen, yeah, your crown roast, that's right, man. Uh, okay. All right, look, I am going to wrap this. Can you use dry sweet rubble? 
Dude, um, the rub that you put on the outside of this is really up to you. Um, I kept it simple, salt, pepper, dude. I mean, because you got all that flavor going on the inside, so I didn't want to mess it up with a bunch of barbecue-type flavors. Um, let me see. Smoke sweet. <laughs> you are not short of ideas, Jessica. <laughs> um, let me see. No, I have not used uh, whoever. Hold on. Uh, yeah, author, no, I have not used uh, pecans or walnuts in stuffing. I have not done that. Um, no. Let me see how long to cook this. Whoa, if you cook it at 150 to 170 degrees, that is like super, super low, man. Um, but I see what you're, I see why you want to do it that, that temperature, right? Um, I don't know. I've never cooked uh, pork loin that, that, that low a temperature, but um, you could probably double the time, you know? And here's the thing. Uh, if you're cooking at 150, um, you could almost not overcook it as long as you didn't dry it out. Um, let me see. Do you have a... Yeah, actually, Benjamin, it's funny. Uh, we're trying to get this book together. We were looking at it last or yesterday afternoon, and um, we realized we have a ton of work to do on it. And um, so we are trying to get that cookbook out. Really, we're trying to get it out before Thanksgiving. I don't know if that's going to happen. We might be able to get an ebook version out before Thanksgiving, but the actual printed version is not going to be ready before Thanksgiving. I don't see that happening. Not, now, if it is, it's going to be a freaking miracle at this point. Um, but, yeah, we are definitely working on it. That's we got, Dude, we have so much stuff planned for the new year. Um, it is unfreaking believable. Um, we just got to make sure we pull it all together over these next couple months, and then we can make it happen. Uh, let me see. Trying to get my recipe pictures ready for you. Oh, dude. Jessica. Jessica's in our VIP group. Um, for you, like the people that are watching this from the business page, uh, she does like a ton of great recipes and a ton of great pictures, as, a, as well as a lot of other people. I'm not, you know, I don't want to discount what everybody else does because we have a phenomenal uh, group of people. So if you are not in the Grill Beast VIP, you should get in there. Um, over the next, probably within the next week, I'm going to be shooting out some super, super deals that um, you're not going to be able to get. Uh, and if I can make it work this way, it's only going to go out to the VIP group. Okay, so if you're watching this on the business page and you're not in our Grill Beast VIP private group, go over there, join. It's free. Uh, lots of great people in there. Um, except we don't allow assholes. So if you're an asshole, you can't get in. All right. Um, no, we want everybody to be able to share without being, you know, freaking attacked. So um, um, come and join. Uh, there are some benefits, and uh, the biggest benefit is being able to share what you do and learn from others, okay? So, look, I'm going to cut out of here, and uh, we really had a great showing today. I'm really happy about that. I think we had, I know we had over 100 on um, uh, the business page. I don't know what the peak was. I think it was close to 100 on the VIP side, but those are people that jumped in. And it doesn't mean, I don't know how many people actually watched until it's over, which is probably going to be at least a 1,000. So um, uh, you're welcome, John. Thanks for being on here, man. John is one of our uh, admins. We have nine or ten admins in our VIP group, and they do a great job. Honestly, we wouldn't be able to have that group if it wasn't for the admins. Um, so anyway, look, I am, um, thanks, Jennifer. Um, I'm cutting out of here. And uh, I'm going to enjoy my drink. Um, I'm going to be enjoying a pork loin in, I don't know, probably another half an hour. And uh, I hope everybody has a great Sunday. And thanks for showing up. Appreciate it. Um, now I'm starting to ramble. And um, that means it's time for me to get out of here. Peace out. Love you. Let me know if you have any questions. And um, that's it.